privilege for me to welcome Dr. D. Doran Hatsiba Maryam is currently uh, Maryam. She is currently the founder director at Computational Intelligence Research Foundation. She receives a BTEC in Information Technology from Madras University, Chennai, ME in Computer Science and Engineering from Anna University, Chennai, and PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from Anna University. Her research interests include parallel and distributed computing, peer to peer computing, grid computing, cloud computing, and big data analytics. Previous questions include Professor at Loyola ICM College of Engineering and Technology in Department of Information Technology, Assistant Professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Chennai, and Teaching Research Associate at the Department of Computer Science, Anna University, Chennai. She has published about 30 papers in international and national journals and conferences. She is a lifetime member of ISDE. She is a reviewer for Computer and Electrical Engineering Journal and Future Generation Computer Science Journal. Welcome, ma'am. The session is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Yasmin. So, uh, on behalf of Computational Intelligence Research Foundation, I would like to thank Auxilium College for having invited me for this talk on image processing using Python. A special thanks to Professor Paulin for having invited me for this talk. Uh, I know, and this session, right? This session we are doing it for the Google Meet people, those who have been registered uh, through your college. And the entire session has been uh, streamed on YouTube uh, for the YouTube uh, viewers to watch it out and uh, to know more about image processing using Python. Okay, so to start off with, I am Dr. Doreen Robin. Uh, the founder and director of Computational Intelligence Research Foundation. Okay, I know most of you, it's a faculty development program, right? I have an experience of uh, teaching in engineering colleges, being a professor in HOD uh, for a decade. My last experience was with Loyola ECAM College of Engineering and Technology, the year 2017. All right, and then I started this research foundation. Okay, research foundation basically work with big data analytics, uh, data science using Python, machine learning, deep learning, cognitive analytics, cyber forensics, and so on. So basically, we develop algorithms, finding solutions to problems. Okay, so whenever you have a query, you can put it in the chat session. All right, and YouTube viewers can put your queries or whatever is your request onto your uh, live chat command. So both will be addressed simultaneously. All right, the entire screen is shared. Okay, so today our focus is on image processing. Okay, uh, before going on to the talk, let me hear from uh, the, the faculty members who are attending this uh, faculty development program. Uh, what is image processing and what is your view about image processing? One of you can unmute and answer. What is the knowledge you know or you have worked in some projects for image processing? The process on the image through digital, uh, digital instruments. Digital instruments, all right then. You can know, have you worked with any packages or what is that flashes your mind? Like YouTube viewers can put it onto the live chat and uh, the Google Meet uh, faculties can unmute and you can speak. Yes, no? The process on the image through computers. Mm -hmm. Okay, only Vibe of Sir able to hear others. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me see onto the chat. Okay. So we process with the image. Like I think, uh, like yesterday, you had a session of exploratory data analysis. Can I know what are the packages you were discussing on exploratory data analysis, please? Like one of the packages, what we have learned about? Is uh, Rubina ma'am from YouTube, you're analyzing digital images, that's right. 
And what are the packages you have? Uh, because yesterday you had a session on experts in data analysis. Can I know the list of packages that you have been discussed on? Uh, on the exploratory data analysis. That's the names of the packages. R, orange, that's an E. Uh, R is a language, OK? Uh, orange is a data miner. And Anaconda. Huh? Colab, OK. These are all interfaces. I'm asking the Python packages. Like Anaconda is a unit where where we where you can code using Python programming R languages. I'm I'm specifically asking what are the data analysis packages that you have dealt yesterday. That's NumPy. Yeah, NumPy. Okay. Matloblib. Matloblib. What, what the use of Matplotlib is? Pandas. For graph uh, protein images. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you for your response. Now uh, we will uh, start with our uh, presentation, right? So we will start. Is there anyone who already worked in image processing? Yes, no, no, yes. No, ma'am. You have not worked. So you're all new to it. OK, so the entire session is going to go on how we are be going to use Python as a tool to process the images, OK? So Python provides a lot of packages, OK? Python has a lot of packages, out of which I have uh, just handpicked like five packages. And we'll be discussing in detail about the five packages and how the implementation has been done. All right, uh, let me start with the session. So I'm just uh, broadcasting my uh, company's website, which is ciarf.co.in. My main ID, Doreen, ciarf at the rate gmail.com. And my mobile number, like, if you wish, you can make a note of it. OK, so uh, to start off with image processing. So if the name itself is clear, and it is uh, depicting that that we are going to process on the data type called as image. All right. So our world is full of data and images. OK, it forms a significant part of this data. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you are using Facebook and WhatsApp? Most of them will be using them. Most of them are using. OK, you are all using Facebook and WhatsApp. All right, that's good. Let me know what is the use of WhatsApp. What data type in WhatsApp we use the most? For sharing videos, images. Ah, sharing videos and images, text, image. In documents. Documents, OK. The most thing that we use is image okay uh, this time very useful to teach yes lots of images okay lots of images like mostly if you see facebook what what predominantly we use for our personal pay, page on facebook facebook why do we use the most you're all facebook users yes no no yes it's a very good time it's an afternoon lunch time okay so let's we have to to share content. Okay, most of uh, most of us share images. Yeah, we share one of our image. Say for example, we share one of our own image, our family image into the Facebook. All right. After Im yes, sharing yeah. our image to the Facebook, what do we wait for in Facebook? Likes and comments. Yes, exactly. We wait for likes and comments. OK, yeah, we share our picture some uh, like today's event. I just posted on to my WhatsApp status. I now have 400 plus people who have watched it. And tomorrow I'm having a next nice session uh, on um, online teaching, digital teaching the need of the art. OK, tomorrow I have a session for Tamil Nadu Teachers Education University. So I just shared my pamphlet, all right, onto the web, onto my WhatsApp status. Just an image, OK, just an image. I got 400 people. So entire content. So whenever I, during this lockdown, I have been trained more than 
uh, 600 teachers 600 teachers on uh, fully non technical teachers and how to use mobile as a teaching equipment to teach the students all right so both school teachers the college professors and so much and so more so after that uh, people started asking me you may wonder why am i putting all my content into the youtube okay there are many people they started asking me whenever you come on live just put on your video on your lecture on to the youtube so that we'd be a member and we'd be we want to enrich our knowledge so uh, whenever you go to by the end of the session i'll share my youtube channel well, so when you subscribe to my channel whenever i come on on live uh, information will be posted into your mail so that if you wish if you are free you can join in any of my sessions right so images images is one of the data type we're juggling around right even my whatsapp status i put on my status and just i wait how many people are have viewed my status all right and if i share one of my image to others and if i click on the image and i select the info what i can see how many have viewed your uh, photo and uh, yes. how many is yet to view yeah so if i have my broadcast group and so every day i send uh, non motivational images uh, to almost uh, 600 people every day so once i share it i just see how many people have just viewed it so image has got more than a video more than a text okay image has got a, a higher level of impacting on the people if if you get both images and videos on to your whatsapp okay which one you prefer to view either image or video image image what is the reason behind because it takes very less time to download all yes. right and it's easy yes. to yeah and easy it's easy so image whenever you see in the digital world images play a very vital role okay it plays a vital role uh, in uh, for uh, dealing with data right dealing with data so today our session is all about image processing okay so in our world today most of us we are using the most predominant data type that is used is called image okay so what is image processing though we have got lots of image okay it an image processing is the process of analyzing and manipulating digital images how many of you remember taking a picture uh, like if you are uh, if you are literally if you are born in 80s 80s and 90s we will have a big camera what is the process we do through the negatives and we'll wait for that uh... ah yes yes we have only vibe up sir and kavya ma'am interacting more okay let us give let us have a play like I, i want everybody to interact so how will you take a picture we take a picture and then yes please then print the negative has to be developed yeah we have a negative you remember the black roll then we go to the shop then the shopkeeper uh the photo studio they print this uh, photograph and we have a hard copy of the photograph okay now i'm going to ask you another question okay for both google meet viewers and youtube viewers okay how many of you are having hard copy of your photos for the past 6 months if you have taken a set of photos how many of you are having hard copy of your photos i have ma'am i do have mm-hmm. so i'm going to ask you the next question the number of hard copy images or more or uh, the soft copy of ima- photos or more soft copy is more soft copy is more so it is predominant right so we have lot of digital images which has changed like now everybody says the new normal right they say the new normal so now everybody is into the digitalization we never have thought most of your faculty members we never thought we'll have a digital teaching to the students okay but i have been training this on digital teaching right from 2017 to a lot of institutions okay more than um, I, i think more than uh, 2000 to 3000 faculty so i should have trained on digital teaching that time people didn't have a big impact okay they didn't have a big impact on teaching but now everybody is rushing towards digital teaching because of this lockdown so digital images the digital image is more in comparison with our normal hard copy of image so from the digital image we need to extract the information and from the extracted information what we are going to put into use a lot and lot of researches are being done in image processing okay we should know the method 
to extract information what is the information that is only needed for us okay what is the information that is needed for us okay uh, can you all put your mics on mute somebody mics is on i think it's prem kumar sir's mic uh, can you put it on mute please okay so we have got lot of digital images okay and uh, images that uh, if you take facebook lot of image processing is being done if you are not uh, going to use if you are not going to use your image some of your friend is uploading your image onto the facebook what is the information that you get notification regarding the updation uh, your friend has uploaded the photo yes how does facebook tell you that the friend has uploaded your photo to his list his list of friends no uh, tell you in this image yeah what uh, facebook does means it extracts the features okay of your face and it has its own automation algorithm okay mm -hmm. so it will extract your image say for example your face whether uh, it looks the same like how we were there before 5 years or is it changing yes it does changing or it is the same how do you look before five years and how do you look now changing ma'am it changes all right so as it changing changes that. every time when we upload an image the facebook application the image processing application it extracts the features of our image okay and it builds its own that is called as feature extraction in image processing and it builds up what are the patterns that is for us say for example if it is during if i am not hosting my if i am not uploading my videos because i go for lecturing with many many colleges and universities outside okay but once they upload my image onto the facebook page or then it gives me a notification that this particular page your face has been appearing which because facebook has made a training of my face and all the features of my face have been stored into their algorithm so any time anywhere whosoever is going to post my picture on to the facebook all right on to the facebook it will give me an intimation that is that you you have got the information and i can make a privacy also on to my account if i make a privacy whosoever is trying to upload my image okay that will not permit them to post it on to their page that can be done okay that's a different uh, great uh, work to be done but you can do it okay we have tried working on other such labs now coming on to that so we need to extract we have to analyze and manipulate the dis digital image that is the basic content what is by image processing we have to analyze and manipulate it's not only analyzing we have to manipulate the data from the information that you're going to get it and extracting what is needed for us to put into some use okay listen to this lecture very carefully both the google meet viewers and youtube viewers May, by the end of the session we have got an online quiz okay once i start off with the quiz you will be all answering the quiz and the quiz will tell me who is going to be the first in answering and who has got the fastest speed to answer is it wonderful how many of you would like to take up the quiz if so put on s on the chat yes. session so you are all ready for the quiz even like youtube viewers can put an s in the like chat Yes, so you are all ready to take up the quiz. So, if you want to take up the quiz, what you should do is to listen to the. You should listen to the. Complete such question. Ah, lecture carefully. I know you are all teachers. Even I am. I was a professor, but even still, I am training a lot of people. Okay, so image processing. We have to manipulate a visual data. okay uh, image processing is also that video processing is also there but most predominantly image processing plays a vital role okay the packages in python that are more is for image processing okay so when you come to the application you have to bridge the gap what uh, we see things and how the devices distribute view things this is very important okay how we see things we see like when students come to a college we, we see uh, all the students will complete the course but some may have by the end of the semester what some may have arrear or some may clear okay so we see some students are very attentive in the class but at the end those who, who pretend to be attentive are not the one who scores more some students you feel them seeing very lazy in the class but those who are lazy 
or the ones who do very well so what we see is not what really happens so in digital images we are going to take the image and then we are going to see what is most important feature that we want to extract from it okay say for example if you're going for face detection i'll show you the demo of how to detect a face if you're going to do a face detection if you want to extract the features of the eye or the features of the nose or features of the mouth okay that could be done say for example this image processing plays a very vital role in medical image okay if i'm going to give my x-ray as my data type into my python algorithm it has to extract and figure out and tell me what is the disease you will understand say for example if i'm going to give my mri scan of a particular part of my of any body it has to extract and say whether the tissues are same or it has got some disease all right so most of automations have been done using image processing if i give my ct scan report okay just to extract the information from the ct scan image and it has to process the information and has to clearly give me an information whether this patient is suffering from this particular disease or not or we can predict whether this patient will have a disease in the future all right so lots of research are going into the medical imaging and now uh, and that is what we are, what we see things and how we are going to devise them digitally are two different things okay our visual system doesn't see the world the world the computer or scanner sees okay so sometimes you see people okay you see people uh, onto the screen okay they are on the screen they are very happy do you see some facebook pages you see the people always smiling okay always smiling having a good pose they they even have a picture with their own family but when you dive into that family only we will know what is the problem that is really occurring in the family what we see in the facebook is not real what we see in the status is not real can you understand what i'm trying to say yes or no yes ma'am yeah yes, ma so image what computer and scanner will just post what is available okay but what is really happening is what when we when only the family members will know really the family is happy or the family has got some issues okay what we see in image is not going to part with an expression of the image that is taken you will be able to find whether really the person is happy or not okay there was a picture of kethi okay you know who's kethi anybody facebook viewers sorry youtube viewers or google meet who's kethi no you don't know who's kethi okay i give you she is from uk don't know okay she is a princess there okay kethi okay uh, queen elizabeth grand uh, son's wife okay and uh, when there was a picture on the family they gave that image okay for a uh, feature extraction and they compared kathy's picture i will show from my screen kathy middleton okay uh she is kathy she is the duchess of the prince okay prince william's wife okay so now you know who is kathy william yes so she is kathy middleton okay so in a picture of that has been posted okay in one particular picture they were trying to extract the features of kathy okay and then they were able to figure out on one particular picture she was not happy though she pretend to smile but she was not happy so using the digital image uh, like machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm we can extract the features of the image and we can make it even more sensible we cannot make it as human that's not possible we are all created by god 
okay our creator only knows how we are but we can extract the information okay we can extract the information and from which we'll be able to uh, figure out the uh, characteristics of that particular picture how the person was and this is possible using image processing okay and um, so these are the tasks what image processing does okay you can display an image that will be seeing what are the packages are available how are we able to display the images okay and then we can do uh, an automized image like cropping flipping you know what is flipping making the left to right and also we can do rotating okay rotating and image segmentation image segmentation is that i want to take only a segment of an image okay say for example if there is a tumor in the brain if i'm going to give my mri image okay it will segment only the tumor space of it that is image segmentation and the next is we can go for classification of images how we are going to classify this image if i'm going to give in my data set of 200 to 300 images okay this images has got both gender both male and female Okay, my machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm, the Transcend Python will extract and tell me. So you have uploaded 300 images, out of which 200 are male and 100 are female. That image classification can be done using uh, image processing using Python. I told you about feature extraction, making it more sensitive. What are the features that we need? Only those particular features we can extract it. We can restore images, we can enhance images. I'll be showing a demo of it okay and we can make it as image recognition if you train okay if you train an image like say for example if i'm going to train a, a, a particular a product okay particular product so if i'm going to pro train a computer image okay different computer images so if i'm going to load even one lakh of data set once my a machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm is trained with a different uh, size of computer when i feed in my data set into it all right when i feed in my data set into it it should be able to tell me in every picture how many computers are there all right so most probably it will not be 100 percent but we can try to the maximum of 90 to 100 percent okay so different applications different algorithms are there so for different data sets so for being a pure researcher you should be able to figure out which algorithm best suits for the application for the particular data set so all i always say this to all researchers and faculty members all right so at least you need to train up with two to three different data sets at least with five to six algorithms and find which algorithm is suited for the particular application is it clear to now what we have seen ma'am or do you have any doubts yes yes please Yes, please. Any doubts? No, oh, ma'am, it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Yes, thank you. Ma'am, image restoration, explain one second, please. Image restoration, if I'm going to give an image with lots of um, maybe dust, okay, or it is shattered, it's not cleared, I can do an enhancement of the image. I can make the blur, blurred image to be a little more sharper using algorithms. Or if there is more like salt and pepper dust, I can remove it off. All right. So restoring the image, it is enhancing the images. I can increase the brightness, the contrast, everything. See, you all can think everything can be done using my system in my computer. You can do it for how many images. But when you write an algorithm, and even I've tried feeding like one lakh of data also within few seconds okay within few seconds the entire operations that we want to do we are automizing it and feeding it to our system and it will complete it so that is why we go for algorithms and image processing so last uh, last number when i went uh, i was there i went to us okay so in the embassy there was no physical checking just they made us to stand before a camera the camera took us a picture and we scanned all our passports and it just mapped with all our features and it was able to say me whether it is dorian robin or it's not so see the part it was a huge queue even to complete this process like we were waiting for three hours imagine if there is a manpower included they we should have waited even more than six hours at a particular time hundreds of people are processing the same data like verifying with my passport am i the person 
all right so that 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 was the first time whenever when when we travel around india or some other country i have never seen it only in us i was able to see that so everything is automized there was no physical checking nobody check whether i'm dorian robin we just need to stand in the queue we have to scan our passport then it takes up a picture and it automatically finds us yes, and it says it's your dorian robin so that's the part of using image processing into our different applications all right okay any more doubts shall i move on yes ma'am yeah okay thank you uh so python for image processing so python is an excellent choice okay it is the best choice i will say for image processing okay it's freely available and lot of algorithms like more than 3000 4000 algorithms are coming up every day so you can use it up according to the application what we see okay so we should be very careful what algorithm you should use for what application for uh, a lock there will be only one if you have a lock it has only one what can i get the answer you to viewers can put it on the live chat and google meet viewers can tell me every lock will have only one key key, key. okay very good who answered it uh, who answered me yeah abirami ma'am yes a big round of applause for abirami ma'am all right and uh, so one lock will have a key the same thing most of the research is what we do we take some data sets we take some algorithm we try to run it okay thank you mary ma'am thank you fatima ma'am and thank you sindhu ma'am thank you anandan sir and thank you victoria ma'am all right so uh, we always think i take a data set i have an algorithm i try to fit into the algorithm i get a result so my research is over no not at all we should be try see even when we work in my research lab we train for one problem at least 10 to 15 algorithms okay then only we'll be able to do okay even i i have got lot of researchers they come they are research scholars they come with the problem definition we will train them on the algorithm but they will be working on they will be developing the algorithm we'll be training on the technologies okay a technology will be trained for them and from which they'll be able to code it on okay we it's a huge work because you see many people they try to do projects and give that we don't because we i am into academics i don't appreciate it when i had been in hod on to the particular batches whenever i was a project uh, coordinator i can assure not even one student was uh, doing the getting projects from outside we say when you go to a doctor we know the doctor has performed an operation when we make an engineering students or computer graduate students or whatever it is when we tell the students are not able to code on their own which means like operation is successful but the patient died that is the case most of the education institution they are doing so every time i say whenever using a computer science stream it should be definite the student should be able to code on their own so when so i always accept the faculty development programs because i know when teachers are trained through you like thousands and thousands would be trained entire life so when i was in hd i always train my teachers every semester break on your new technology and they try to implement to the students so you know students are smarter but i should i always say teacher should be super smarter once we are super smarter when the faculty students will know that this student teacher can code on their own they are able to do the processing on their own when we do a real time application during the class time that is when we are adding feather to our cap okay that's very important so we should be very careful it's not only one algorithm we work so in today's session we'll be uh, we're going to see about five packages one is skykit image package okay this is uh, the basic package there are like uh, many packages available many libraries that is what i was asking you starting what are the python packages you have used or what are the python libraries you have used on exploratory data analysis basic uh, exploratory data analysis some of you told anaconda or orange i am sorry that is wrong the packages are like numpy skypy pandas matplotlib cbom and okay and many packages are there so be very clear and specific python packages or whatever we import right well, that is what we call python libraries or called python packages so python libraries that we are going to see for image processing for today's session is that skykit image that's one package and second is numpy 
okay in numpy we'd be seeing how it is relevant to our image okay yesterday you should have seen numpy for the different applications i'm not aware of it but today's session will be seeing numpy in power with image processing and skypy can one of you say or you can type it on there what is num what is the full form of numpy what is the full form of skypy yes please Maybe number Python, Python. Numerical Python. Hmm. Yeah. It is numerical Python. What is SkyPy? Don't give guesses. <laughs> Don't give guesses. So when you first step to learn Python is that you have to learn expert data analysis in Thorough. NumPy stands for numerical Python. Like all the applications like Laplace transform, fast Fourier transform, lot of deep mathematical algorithms for two dimensional to multi-dimensional can be done using NumPy. Is it clear? NumPy is for numerical Python. SkyPy, anybody, even YouTube viewers can put it onto the live chat. SkyPy, no guesses. Scientific. Uh, scientific, scientific Python. So, uh, yes, SkyPy is for scientific. scientific Python and NumPy is for numerical Python. So, we are going to see how NumPy and SkyPy can be used in image processing. Okay, NumPy and SkyPy can be used for different applications. But today's topic is image processing using Python. So, we are going to see how NumPy and SkyPy will be used for this. All right. And then we'll be seeing a both pill. Okay. Python image library or it is called Pildo is another package and then our final package that predominantly many of them are using is called open CV Can one of you say what is the full form of CV? CV stands for Computer vision, okay CV stands for computer vision, okay CV stands for computer vision So that is predominantly used, okay that is uh, predominantly used and we'll be seeing about uh, 10 functions We'll see how the time goes and then uh, we have a session till 5 so accordingly we'll be able to do it. All right Is it clear till now? What are the five packages? So today we'll be seeing about SkyKit image, NumPy, SkyPy, Pillow package and OpenCV all right, so starting with SkyKit image, it's an open source Python package that works with the NumPy array. So when I feed in my data into the image, okay, when I feed, sorry, when I feed my image into my uh, Python, okay, and when it shows it and it gets, it will be transferred into an image array called as NumPy array. So using that, we can use algorithms and utilities that is used in research, okay, that is used in research and it is mostly used for education purpose and also lots of industry, lot of industry they are using applications using SkyKit image, okay. It's very simple, straightforward libraries, okay, even those are new to Python, you'll be able to do it, okay. The code is in high quality and it's written by an active community of volunteers. See, every day it is growing every day python is growing so we had python 2 then we had python 3 all right and then it keeps on going so now the present package is python 3. so in python 3 uh, lots of uh, play, like every day people they volunteer and they put into your py 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 packages that is called python package index right so i'm going to use the skykit image for filtering purpose okay skykit image is basically used for different purpose like one one such that we are going to see today is for a uh, filtering we are going to see it for filtering purpose Okay, so uh, the package, uh, let me show you how to upload. Okay, so this is the package, SkyKit image, the package is SK image. Okay, the SkyKit package is SK image. So I'm going to import, I'll just show you. Okay. So from SkyKit, I'm going to, they've got a lot of data available. They've got a set of data set available, out of which I'm going to take one set data called as camera, okay? And can you can you see here, what is the type of the camera? Type will tell me the data type. So what does it say? Can you see? Yes. Thank, thank you, Mangaveni, ma'am. Mangaveni, ma'am. Yeah. What is the data type? So when I upload my image, okay, when I take my image using SkyKit, all right, and then 
if I'm going to see it on, what is the data type it shows? Array. What array? Non dimensional array. NumPy array. NumPy array. NumPy stands for numerical array. That is what I told. SkyKit image, it plays along with my numerical array. Okay. The, it plays along with my numerical array. Okay. Is it clear till now? Okay. Now, so I'm just importing an image. I'm finding the shape of it. What is the size of it? And see here, I'm loading an image. I'll show you how the image would look like. And but the images are stored in a NumPy array. I'm taking the minimum and minimum maximum value so i'm plotting it okay when i plot because i'm taking it using the camera okay but once i plot it okay once i plot it and i'm plotting it this is the image that is taken from the data set so the uh, this image name is called camera even inside uh even inside um uh, uh what do i say even inside my package okay lot of uh, data sets okay lot of data sets are available inside my skykit image to start off if you are new to image processing you can take the data sets that are available inside that are available uh inside the that are available inside the skykit image okay i'm just showed you how to retrieve an image okay so this is how i'm just loading the data i'm just retrieving the image okay so from there now i'm going to see like uh, again i'm going to use matplotlib and here i'm going to take another data called as data.coins okay this is the data set i'm going to import and i'm going to use a filter Okay, there are different filters like Gaussian filter and many such filters are there. Here I'm importing using Sobel filter. I'm showing the image. Okay, so I'm just taking the image and plotting it. All right, so this is how I can use SkyKit image. And one such feature of SkyKit image that, uh, that is most predominantly used is called image filtering. Is it clear? So SkyKit image, what is the usage of SkyKit image? It is used for? One one particular uh, functionality of SkyKit image is called as image filtering. Filtering. Okay. What about there are different filters like there's Gaussian filter, Sobel filter. So you should be very specific. What kind of image you're going to do? All right. And the second most important, what is the functionality that you're going to do? Okay, so accordingly, you need to do a survey of different filtering that is available. And for our particular application, what is that we need alone will be taken. All right, so image filtering. And next, uh, next we move on. Is it clear of SkyKit? So this is my original image. After I did my filtering, this is my filtered image. So I'll be able to get the edges of the coins. Is it clear? So this is what the use of filtering. There are different filtering. For this particular application, I use Sobel filtering. So this is what is one of the usage of SkyKit image. One of the usage of SkyKit image is image filtering. And I've taken just only one filter mechanism and I've showed you. All right. Yes. Any doubts till now? Okay. I'll move on to the next package. The next package is NumPy. NumPy is, I told you, like when we took an image of camera, what was the data type of the image? When I imported it, it was? NumPy array. NumPy array. It is NumPy array. So array. all the images, okay, you would be wondering. NumPy image, we can do Laplace, like you can do Phosphoria, you can do a differentiation, you can do integration, all such. Then how is that it is going to, how is it going to be useful in image? When I load an image, the image data type is called as an image NumPy array. All right. So uh, an image is essentially a standard NumPy array. It has got pixels of data. Okay, so why it is used if I want for slicing? Okay, the predominant research that is going now is like uh, now what everybody is wearing. What is the new normal? What everybody is wearing when you want to go out? Coolers. Huh? Coolers. Mask. Mask. 
yeah but everybody we are wearing mask right mask. it has become a trend now okay so everybody we are wearing mask now a lot of research is going on so if i wear a mask from my nose to the mouth these features are covered can you see from my nose to my mouth these set of features are covered so if now i told you, you can do on image detection in image processing okay if i have my own image of with mask and without mask and when we train in my machine learning algorithm okay if I, if if you are going outside somewhere if somebody is going to tell you that they want to take a picture of yours how many of you will remove your mask will you remove your mask in an open place yes or no no because of corona we don't all right so no. now a lot of research is going on okay the face with mask and without mask so they're tracking the extracting the features okay they're extracting the features of our face with and without mask and even with mask if i'm they're going to scan in my face that picture will tell me whether i am dorian or not which is the need of our uh, able to understand so a lot of that i cannot do it for each and every person human interaction would be very difficult we don't want anybody to touch us like at a distance of social distancing when a camera takes my pictures with my mask even with my mask the system should tell that i am dorian robin or not so this is one of the research going on and some of it are successful and some are going on by july first week i am i am having one more uh, uh, webinar uh, for a college on uh, using deep learning using image processing if any one of you are free kindly subscribe to my channel i'll be giving you time during the end of it so whenever you subscribe to my channel whenever i come on live you'll be able to see it okay so that time i may show you the demo of it okay so this is how Uh, it, uh, sorry, this is how it was an original image, and then it was so NumPy is used for slicing. It is also used for masking. What is not needed, you can mask. Okay, and for fancy indexing also, it, the image can be loaded using Sky SK image. So when it, whenever I load an image using SK image, the data type is predominant. The data type is very clear and specific. It is NumPy array. Okay, and when I display it, I am displaying using Matplotlib. Okay, that is what I saw. P L T dot I am show off when I give that image. What is the data type? What is the variable of that that image shows off? Okay, so now I am going to show you an example. In Scikit-Learn, we saw about image filtering, and in NumPy, we are going to see an example of image masking. Okay, so here I am going to take the same image. So from I am importing NumPy SkyKit image. I am going to import my Matplotlib. So whenever I import this, okay, whenever I import uh, my uh, camera as one of the data sets into the image variable, it will become as a NumPy array. So I am masking eighty-seven percent of it. So this is my original image. Okay, this is my original camera image. Okay, I'm masking it. Okay, in uh, as SK as SkyKitLearn, I was doing image filtering. In NumPy, I'm masking it. So when I mask it for the greater lesser than eighty-seven, so that is the value I'm just taking it. And now, can you see the masked image? So this is a masked image, and this is the original image. So in SkyKitLearn, we saw about image filtering. In NumPy, we have seen about image masking using this function mask. This is my original, and this is my masked image. Is it clear? Any doubts? Is it clear, or any doubts? You can ask me, both the Google Meet members and YouTube members. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Next, uh, we we have completed SkyKit and NumPy. Next, we move on to SkyPy. What is SkyPy? I said SkyPy is stands for. Anyone, please. What does Scientific Python? Scientific Python. Scientific Python. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ah, uh, Scientific uh, Scipy is another Python core uh, package like NumPy. Scipy is also used for basic. Okay, basic image manipulation and processing. Okay, and here the sub module is ND ND image. Okay, so it provides n dimensional NumPy arrays. Okay, when you work with n dimensional NumPy arrays, then when we go for linear or non-linear filtering, I'll show you one example of it. And also for binary morphology. Okay, for binary morphology and for interpolation and object measurement. If you want to measure some object, 
or I'm giving an, a 3D object, then using Skype, I can measure the object. Okay. In some mobile application, you can see a camera opening an iPhone and there is an app called measurement. Okay. Even if you think of having your own application, you can do it using Skype. Okay. So moving on to it. Okay. So here I'm going to blur. Okay. First I did filtering for the next application or for the next package. What did we do with NumPy? What did we do with NumPy? What was the functionality we did in NumPy? Masking. Masking, correct. Why Web Sir is the most vibrant participant in Google Meet? Okay, there are many people here, 40 people are here. Everybody can try to answer it, okay? So whenever I take classes in colleges or uh, I always give a, I, I have a basic rule there, okay? If one of them answer for the particular class, the particular sh student should not answer again, which means every student will get an opportunity to answer it, okay? So the next question, what was the functionality that we did using NumPy? Yes, thank you, Victoria, ma'am. You're fast. In YouTube viewer, they answered. Is one from Google Meet? Nobody? Hello? Are you all there? Filtering. Filtering for SkyKit. For NumPy, we use image. Masking. Okay, we masking. did image masking. And now in SkyKit image, we are going to try how to blur an image. Okay, what we are going to learn in SkyKit image, how to blur an image. Okay, I'm going to import SkyPy. Okay, I told you know we'd be working with n-dimensional array. Whenever we're going to work with n-dimensional array, then we use SkyPy. It's a sub-module. Okay, so from SkyPy, I'm loading a, uh, uh, I'm loading a data set called face. Okay, a blurred face and a very blurred face. Here, I'm using Gaussian filtering. Imagine first time I used, um, I used Sobel filtering. For this, I'm using a Gaussian filtering, Gaussian filter, and then I'm blurring it. So this is my blurred image. Can you see? This is very blurred image. Okay. And when I'm increasing my sigma, uh, the value of blurring will increase more. Can you see here? So this is the first thing what I'm going to show is a very blurred image. Since I've not imported the package, now it will show me. Okay, and this is my blurred face. Okay. So this is my very blurred image. When I increase my sigma here to seven. blurring level is increased can you see the difference when it was five when it is three it is like this when it is more the blurring is more can you see here so using Gaussian filtering I'm blurring my image is it clear is it clear any doubts yes. till now okay so using SkyPy we have we have seen an usage of how to blur an image okay the next one to move on with okay so this is my original, this is my more blood and less blood, okay? And now I'm, we are going to see about PIL, okay? In PIL, we are going to use Python image library, okay? It's a free library, okay? So PIL stands for Python imaging library, okay? So there are different packages. So we started with SkyKit learn, sorry, sorry. What was the first package we learned? SkyKit? SkyKit. Uh, SkyKit image, the second package was NumPy, the third package was 
skype pi and now but all relative to only for imaging first we saw about filtering the second we saw about masking the third we saw about blurring and now the fourth package is pill we are saying okay pill uh, is a free library it is used like as we have used for sky kit it is also used for opening manipulating saving for different image formats okay it's a, if i'm going to have a jpeg image i can save it as png okay so different file formats can be used okay and now uh, earlier it was little stagnant and again they have picked up the recent python release pill has again picked up and what are the basic image processing functionality that pill does is point operation okay and also it works with lot of filtering okay lot of filtering and color spaces conversion i want to make it to rgb or to cmyk or whatever is the or i want to make it as a gray scale okay according to my application i can do my color con uh, conversions okay and now uh, how to enhance an image okay now here using pill i'm going to enhance an image so here i'm going to enhance the contrast of an image okay uh somebody was asking my thing why baba he was asking me sir was asking me how to what is image restoration okay if i want to enhance an image i'm using the pill package okay from image and filtering okay i'm opening it i'm increasing the contrast of it see this is my original image can you see the difference between this image and enhanced image yes or no Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is called ima image enhancement. I'm increasing the contrast. I can increase the brightness. I can increase the sharpness. Okay. Whatever it is, I'm increasing here for this particular example. I've increased the contrast of the image. I've increased the contrast of a, of the image. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll just close it off. This is okay. Now, now uh, coming to it. So that is like likewise, more applications are there. In fill, the final package that we're going to see is OpenCV. Here, a lot of industries, lot of researchers are using OpenCV. It's the most widely used libraries. Okay, the first library what we saw is like what what when we want to start off using with image processing. And OpenCV is the Python API. Okay, the OpenCV Python is the Python API for OpenCV. What does CV stands for? computer vision cv stands for computer vision when i say open cv it is open source computer vision library so what is the full form of open cv is uh, yes is beautifully ma'am has asked in uh, uh, youtube how can we blur a particular space if i want to blur a particular space i have to fix up the radius from that picture or if i do a face detection if I do a face detection, if I detect a face from a particular picture, I can only keep the picture uh, dark or only picture sharp and the surroundings to be a uh, little blurred. What is that that we use in your mobile to do that? Some of you are using mobiles, right? You are able to do that in your mobile. Can you tell me? In what mode if you take, you can blur your background and keep your face bright? Nobody is using mobile? Are you all awake? If you are all awake, just put an S onto the chat session. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, just type, a yes, chat, type in a chat session, yes. Okay. When we take a live class, we see, right? Sometimes we need to have, yes, even YouTube viewers yes, can put an S. Yes. Huh? What is the mode? Portrait mode. Portrait mode. Ah. Portrait. Portrait. So if you take it in portrait, what happens? It will be highlighted uh, and the uh, background will be a little blurry. Okay, okay. So it will highlight what you want to highlight and it will remove and it will make blurred what is that is correct. So likewise yes. also, yes. likewise also you can uh, do it in your uh, Likewise, you can do an a radius of it and then from which you will be able to do it. All right. So, Python is not only the fastest because uh, it is written with C, C++. I don't know how many of you are aware with it. Uh, you're all computer science people or you would have learned about computer. Okay. There is a language called C, C++, Java. Okay. Uh, can I use Java programming inside my C language? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. No. Hmm. You cannot use. Okay. I can I use uh, my Java into my C language? 
Can I use Java okay. in Tumisi language? Yes or no? No, no, no. No, you cannot. But here in Python, okay, in Python you can use your C, C++. So you can integrate your languages in Python. I don't know how many of you are aware. Here in my company, I have my course, okay. So data science using Python. So there we take, it's a fully hands-on session where I take fully uh, from uh, the basics. We have got like 20 hour scores and 40 hour scores. This is my company's website, cirf.co.in. Okay, just put in the chat session. Uh, when you are free, uh, when you're free, you can visit my website. And for YouTube viewers, I'll put it on. I'll put my company's name. Okay. So this is my company's website. Whenever you're free, you can go on, log in onto it. And uh, we have like machine learning courses and digital classrooms. And this is the data science and machine learning course. And when you click on uh, here, you'll be seeing the entire course syllabus that we conducted now most of it is online course that is conducting if you want to learn or if you want to expertise yourself in python with full hands-on okay uh, uh, then only you'll be able to work on with that and these are the different workshops that i've conducted during this pandemic season this is the pandemic season workshops on some you can click onto the link and uh, the entire session has been there and you can see so don't forget uh, to like my channel or uh, Kindly subscribe to my channel. So at free of cost, you can view, listen to all the lectures. Okay. So I'll give you time at the end. That time, don't forget to subscribe my channel. My, ch I, my channel link, I'll give you. And now I will not share it because by the end of the session, I'll share it to you. Okay. And now we'll uh, work with OpenCV. Okay. So OpenCV is called Open Source Computer Vision. Here I'm going to. Uh, I'll finish this, okay. It's the greatest choice if you want to work with computer vision programs, okay. A computer vision is a field of deep learning that enables the machines to see, identify, and process image like humans. But it cannot be human, all right. So what computer vision here, it's a deep learning. I told you, right, on July 1st week, I have one more lecture. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to see to it, okay. And that also I'll come on live. So that time I'll tell you how to use deep learning algorithms using OpenCV. That's the topic there. So Open Source Vision Library, it's a, it's a research project that started by Intel. You know, that's a processor in every computer at once. It's currently the largest computer vision library. Okay. So here we have got more than 2,500 algorithms. It's not the hundreds. Okay. It's 2,500. And it is increasing every day. And it is increasing. And the best part of Python is that you don't only get the packages, you get the source code of the package also. So when you are you are an expert in coding yourself, you can modify, you can modify the algorithms inside. All right. So these are the eight functionalities. There are more functionalities. I've just taken eight functionalities for discussion today. Okay, we'll quickly see how to read and write and display images that is using OpenCV. Okay, next, how to change the color space. It told right from RGB to grayscale. And the third, we'll be seeing how to resize an image. Okay, the different models of resizing. And image rotation. How do you rotate it using coding? See, everything you should be very clear and crisp in your mind. It's, we are not going to work with one single image. We are going to work with lakhs and lakhs of image. Like one coding, you'll be able to do everything. It's like a creating a function and feeding data into it. And image translation, okay? And then simple image thresholding. There are four different levels of thresholding we'll be seeing. And how to detect an edge in an image and how to detect a face. If I'm going to give you a picture, it will detect the face of it, all right? And first thing, uh, how to read, okay? So machine... Uh, machine we sees and process everything using numbers even if I will give an image or if I give a video or if I give whatever or even if I give a text everything will be in uh, numbers like zeros and ones so it converts your images into zeros and ones and if I'm going to convert this picture you you should also wonder like how ma'am loaded a skykit image in camera 
and then how it is becoming an umpire this is where you have to listen okay so this image okay it will be into this pixel and each pixel will have a value every number represent in the pixel intensity of the particular region see here the pixel intensity is 170 it is gray color here can you see it is in black in color and the image and the pixel intensity is zero and the pixel intensity sorry the pixel intensity here is zero and here again you can see it is black and here it is white can you see here black and white yes or no if it is black it is zero if it is white it is 255 so the entire value that is what in many applications will be converting our image into a grayscale image so it will be between zero to 255 so this is how my entire image whatever i'm going to load in will be into my uh, image okay it will be into my numpy array image numpy array so color images we have multiple values for a single pixel okay so generally we use these three values red rgb image we say right red green and blue rgb stands for red green and blue channels so reading and uh, here it's a lot easier when i use my open c so here i'll be changing the color spaces okay if i'm going to take a color image so uh, by default if i use this function i am read to read an image it is bgr it is called blue green red format okay then i can convert into my color format color image will be in color i can make it to the gray scale or if i don't want i can make it image into unchanged so including my alpha channel so alpha channel is one which shows the transparent information all right so i can resize my image okay how do i how am i going to resize my image so if when you take uh, machine learning algorithms okay when i take machine learning algorithms uh, my data set should be of a fixed size if i'm going to have different sizes then my machine will not be able to understand because it is a machine it is not a human okay uh, if you are going to cook right if you are going to how many of you cook at home i don't know okay i do cook yeah you do cook so how do you see vegetables sometimes the carrot if i take uh, potato sometimes potato will be very big okay sometimes the potato will be very small though the potato is big or small we know how to cut it to make uh, a side dish yes or no yes or no yes ma'am yeah so because we are human we yes, know we know how to resize it okay so if people are coming more we know how to cook more Okay, if people are less, we know how to use, how to cook for less. But whether my machine will understand? Whether my machine will understand? Yes or no? It will not understand. Okay, it will not understand. So when I'm going to give my machine learning algorithm, my images, all the images should be of the same size. If I'm going to give an image of a particular place that people are visiting every day, if I want to take account of it, my image should be always of the same size when I feed into my data set. So before I feed into my data sets, into my machine learning, I have a work of pre-processing. In pre-processing, I need to resize all the images of the same size. All the images should be of the same size. So for that application, we'll be doing for resizing. Till this, we'll see now. So I'm just importing an image. Okay. Uh, I'm importing an image called index.png. Okay. And here... I'm converting the colors like BGR to RGB. What is BGR? Can one of you say? Whatever blue, I read, green, it, red. Uh, blue, blue, green, red. 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 Very good, my love, sir. He's the most vibrant person. Okay. And I told you whenever I take an open CV, it will be in BGR, and then I convert it into RGB here, and I'm showing the image. This is the image that I'm uploading it. Okay. And then then what is the second thing I said? We have to change the color scale. Okay. So from our BGR to RGB, this is a normal thing. Okay. And I'm changing into the gray scale. Can you see the difference of this image to this? Yes or no? Yes, no, no, yes. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So this is how I'm changing the scale of it. Okay. And then I'm, I'm using one more format called HSV format increasing it okay can you see so different scales i'm i can increase whatever scale i need okay the next thing i told about resizing so i'm resizing my image using a linear interpolation there are different interpolations available here i'm just using my linear interpolation can you see this image has been resized like this yes or no 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And now uh, the next method of resizing is I'm going to have my original size. I'm going to have the half size, bigger size, and interpolation nearest. So can you see here, like four levels? So what is that I need? I will be resizing it. Okay, I'll be resizing it. The next thing that I spoke to you is about. Uh, these are the different methods of resizing: nearest, linear, area, cubic, and lang uh, source. But here I've used linear, the bilinear interpolation I've used for this image. I can also do an image rotation. Okay, so it's more whenever I use for uh, data augmentation allows us to generate more samples for training our uh, deep learning model. So if I have with my available data sets, when I want to new, when I want to produce a new ones with my available, I need to rotate, I need to scale, I need to translate image. Image translation next another huge work. Okay, so here it will lead to better generalization. So rotation is one of uh, the most important, uh, easiest method to implement data augmentation. If I want Want to uh, create more data sets for the particular data set okay so uh, whatever length i want to do okay if i want to do it for 90 degrees or 180 like that i can do so here i've done the data rotation of 90 degree can you see this is the original yes, image this is the original image this original image has been rotated like this Okay, using rotation matrix 2D. You can do it for 2D and 3D. And the next is, and the next that, we, what, what we have seen till now, we have started with, we have started with how to read, write and display image. Okay, second, the color scaling, how to change the color scaling. And the third, we have seen how to resize the image. And then fourth, we have seen about image rotation. Mm -hmm. And the fifth, we are going to see translation. What do you mean by translation? Normally, what do you mean by translation? Maybe black and white to color, color to race. No, no, no. Don't think about it. Normally, what is translation? One thing to another. Oh. Image to another. Can you give me an example? Translation is a geometry transformation. Maps the position of every object. Hmm. You can change the position of an object. Okay. Yes. Okay. Say, for example, I'm taking a picture in which I'm little sidewise. I can translate it to be become the center. Can you see in my video? I'm just moving outside. It will not be clear, but I can use it to make it center. Okay. Any other thing? Translation is most probably used in which field? Don't think about image always. What is translation? Uh, language. Language. Yes, thank language. you, Abhiramima. Okay, thank you, Abhiramima. So, we, if I if I'm going to speak in English, I have got lot of applications in Python. It is automatically converted to whatever language you want. If you want in Tamil or Hindi or whatever it is like. Here, image translation is exactly said. We have to reposition. We have to reposition the uh, image objects as what we desired. Okay, as what we desire. Okay. Mm. So that is what we will be seeing that. And thresholding and edge detection and phase detection. So we have seen till this. Okay. And now translation and then shifting the uh, attach shift invariance to the model. Okay. So next is, uh, uh, th this is how we have done. So uh, this is image translation. Can you see? This is my original image. My original image, where is my cat? Here. I'm shifting the variance here. So I cannot see. I'm just shifting it. I've just done this for demo. We can take a particular image, what we want, and that we can do for this. Able to understand? This yeah. is just for image translation. Yes, yes. The next is thresholding of the image. Okay. This is image thresholding. So different levels of thresholding. The same image, I'm converting into grayscale to binary, threshold binary inverter, truncated threshold to zero, threshold to zero inverter. Can you see the six images here? All the six have been done at here for the same cat. Okay. This is called thresholding. It's called image segmentation method. It compares the pixels with the threshold value. Whatever threshold value I'm going to give, accordingly it will work. And the next is image 
edge detection. So edges are the points in an image which gives me an outer line, which sharply has uh, some of them have sharp or some of them have discontinued. So I have to find out what are the discontinuities in depth, in surface or in materials or in scenes. Okay, so that I have to do. So edges are very useful features of an image. If I want to detect a disease, edges are important. If we want to detect some objects, edges are important. So even deep learning models capture the edge features to extract the information about the object present. So if you want to find whatever is, if say for example, if it is some surveillance, all right. So you will need to be very particular about the objects present in the image. So edges are different from counters as they are not related to objects. Okay, here edges are used for image segmentation and also for image sharpening. If you want to sharpen my image, so I'll show you one example. So I'm just using the same image, okay, and I'm using this algorithm called canny edge algorithm. So what was the object that was present in the picture? Can you tell me what's an object present? Cat. Cat. Okay. So cat. When I give this image, like this only with few lines of uh, coding, I'll be able to find the edges of the algorithm. And then next, uh, we'll uh, see with this and then we'll go on uh, for our quiz. Okay, we'll be going on for our quiz. Hmm. All ready for the quiz. Okay, so next, the final topic that you're going to see is phase detection. Okay, phase detection. So OpenCV uh, supports hard cascade object detection, based object detection. So uh, here inside this HR has got different thing. If I want to extract my eye, it is for different. If I want to extract my face, it is different. Okay, so hard cascades are machine learning based classifiers to calculate different like edges, lines, whatever that is in, in an image. So then using this class space, I'll be training using multiple positive and multiple negative images. So I'll be training it and from which I'll be using it. All right. So here I've used only the frontal face. Okay. Just a face of it. Can you see this is my family picture? Okay. So I'm able to detect the face of myself, my husband, my kids, my mother, but I need to train even more. Only my father's face, it is not coming because it is this uh, pixel is pixelating with my background is also blue and this is also blue. Okay, so in these cases, okay, in this kind of cases, we need to train our classifier in such a way that I need to get a desired output. So I've used. Uh, uh, Like if I use another image, okay, which has been trained for this particular, this hazard cascade, it will run and it will show me the particular uh, test image. So for our, even more, even for our application, when we try, okay, when we try, uh, it will let me know. It's running now. Okay. Any doubts till now? No, ma'am. No. All are very clear. Even YouTube viewers, if you have got any doubts, you can put it on. Okay, so uh, these are the things that we have seen. Okay, uh, started with what are the five? We have started with the five packages. Okay, we gave an introduction about what is image processing, what is the use of image, where images are being there, and then what are the main processing of images. We started with SkyKit image. In SkyKit image, what was uh, uh, the application that we saw about? What was the functionality? Can one of filtering. Uh, filtering, very good. In NumPy? In NumPy, what did we see? 
Masking. Masking. Why was that good? And in Skype, by uh, blurry image. Blurry image. Other than why was that pillow? Enhancing. Enhancing. In open CV. In open CV, we saw eight functionalities. What are the eight functionalities? First is. Uh, uh reading h detection uh wait wait first we we Please saw about how to read write and display image. image then we saw about changing a color, color spaces change. then we saw about resizing image then we saw about rotating image then we saw about image translation then we saw about image thresholding then we saw about edge detection and face detection so we have seen about five uh, packages and in each package is one and in open cv we saw about eight packages eight functionalities so was the session useful yes ma'am okay yes ma'am indeed it was thank you yes, i'll just give you a review about my in, in my uh, company what we do in our company and then i I'll, i'll give you then we'll start off with our quiz so it's a live quiz so whenever you do it will be lively broadcasted okay uh, so this is my company computation intelligence research foundation it is in ayanavaram okay if you want to make a note of my contacts you can make a note of my contacts okay and uh, um what is my objective of my company here we design and develop inspired algorithms new algorithms okay so we work in big data analytics we work on iot data mining artificial intelligence research data science and mostly we work on education technology okay and here we train on the latest technology on students faculties and corporates and also we work with funded projects okay to develop and explore a new optimization technique so the training technology here we have got like 20 hours training 40 hours training okay and it goes accordingly so here whenever we start i start with the installation of os how many of you okay be true to your heart mind and soul how many of you can say that you can um, uh, install your own operating system uh, yeah ma'am you can put on the chat session i would give a try ma'am you will give a try okay how many of you know how many of you know to install a, an ubuntu operating system yes mohan raj sir good abhiram ma'am good pollen ma'am good others and youtube viewers what you are seeing is uh, from my channel whatever you are seeing uh, is an is on my channel it's dorin robin is others no yes no no yes okay so here in every course we start with installation of operating system went to even faculties they have come you can visit in my website here we start with how to set up hadoop framework and how to work with live projects python the basics numpy skype by uh, we, we every two months we enhance the web, uh, data course and the latest course is updated on my website you can check it out i put my shared i've shared my details in my google meet uh, chat link and also in youtube and then we work on mod mobile the hybrid mobile application where you develop one application you can get output for web application you can get output for uh, uh, android your ios and window everything and so on using apache cordova and then a uh, front end and back end web development we do and for phd scholars we train on the technologies and we tell them which technology you can use to find solution to your research problems and also we work with the um, general publication in collaboration with cir of okay on reputed journals and also we give training on latex uh, does any one of you know what is latex yes no it's the tool that is used for text processing for different journal applications so are you there yes okay mm. 
and then we give faculty internship faculty internship we have done for python hadoop spark machine learning deep learning and image processing and technologies we have trained people like even students they come if you wish you can recommend your students so every semester break the students they come and they get their first semester they learn about data science using python the sec second year they learn on machine learning using python then data visualization that's more more important without visualization you cannot do and big data analytics using hadoop some students go for web application like the django some of some students they tra train on iot using raspberry pi and python so during vacation students can come and faculties can come and you can enhance your uh, skills if you wish now uh, just give me a second okay um i'll just uh, share okay i'll just uh, uh, share uh, the quiz link the quiz link okay before which you have got any questions you can put it on i will share the feedback link also for the session both for youtube viewers and uh, so for the youtube viewers i'll uh, i'll just uh, make the settings ready Okay, uh, are you all there? I'll share the link here for the quiz. YouTube viewers, yeah, I'll send the feedback link. No issues, I'll send the feedback link. Uh, I'll send. Now I've given you a link for the online quiz. Have you got it? And also I am sharing my channel link. Not able to open this. Mom, it is not open. Okay, just give me a minute. You try to click the link. Yeah. What it says? Uh, uh, is it asking you to enter the name? Is it working now? Now try. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, it's working. I'll share my screen. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you can click on the my channel link I've given. You can just subscribe to my channel. I'm just setting up the quiz for you. Uh, I can see. So the quiz uh, goes like this. Uh huh. Once you start the quiz, I'm waiting for players to join in. Still people are joining in.
Yeah, I'm waiting for the first question. Have you all joined? We have got 40 people here into this quiz. And even YouTube viewers are there. I have not started yet. I will start my quiz. Is there still anybody finding any problem in joining? You can let me know. I will start off with the quiz. Have you all joined? Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Is everybody ready? Can we start the quiz? Yes, ma'am. Yes, all ready. Yes, yes now I'm going to start off with the quiz. You will have a few seconds. Okay, and then we'll be finding out who is who is leading into this quiz. Okay. Uh, we are going to start off with the quiz. All set, get ready, go. The first question, look at your phone now or your system. Got it? Are you getting the quiz? Yes, the first question. We can see how many seconds. Yes. Yeah, time's up. So 14 of you have answered correctly. Okay, sorry, nine of you have answered correctly and two have answered wrong. Now we can see the winner is who has typed first. I don't know who, who has given your name as J. That's what you should give your name correctly. Who has given your name as J? Can I know? So this is the first few toppers. The second is M. Madhu. Who is Madhu? If you are on YouTube or who is J? You should have given your name properly. Who's Jay? It's from YouTube or from Google Meet. I don't know. And the second person is M. Madhu. And the third person is Robin. And the fourth is P. Sugana. And the fifth is Shyama. And sixth, uh, Pollen, Mam, and uh, so on. So, this is finding interesting. The next question. Already? Yes, you have got very less, like a few seconds to complete. Image filtering was done by. Yes. Time's up. 20 of you have answered correctly, 9 of you have answered wrong, and 4 have answered NumPy is wrong, SkyPy is wrong. The correct answer is SkyCut image. YouTube link also the same link what I've shared. Sorry, sorry. Is it baby? Okay. We'll see who's the winner. The winner is again Jay. Who's Jay? I'm asking who's Jay. You're not answering. No. For this question, the winner is P. Suguna. Who's Suguna? Can I get answer from Suguna? No, myself, ma'am. Okay, you are the first. Oh, first is Janani. Okay, Janani, ma'am. You have put your name as J, so we will not know. Okay, for the second uh, question, the winner is Suguna, ma'am. Great. And the second place is Robin. Third is Paulin. Fourth is uh, Geeta. And out of everybody, the fastest one is Abirami. Abirami, ma'am, was the fastest to answer the question. Yes. Great going. We'll move on to the next question. Be ready, be ready to be the fastest. To come first. Yes, full form of pill.
Let's see. We have got five seconds more. Yes, 31 of you have given the correct answer. Great. And we'll see who's the leader in this for the third question. And the fastest and the first winner is Suguna Ma'am again. A big round of applause to Suguna Ma'am. Second, Robin. Third, Paulin. Fourth, Gita. Fifth, Abhirami Ma'am. Sixth, Saujanya. Seventh, uh, Ravindra Reddy, sir. Sixth, uh, Virendra, Dr. Virendra, Dr. Prabhakar Reddy, Dr. Shyama. We all move to the next question. Okay, YouTube viewers, I've shared the link, the same link you need to start off with. I've already shared the link, the menti.com link. You have to use the same link, okay? We move on to the next question. So this is the final question. Five questions here. Machine learning model works with a So the correct answer is a fixed size input. So let's see who is the winner for this. Final question of the quiz. Okay, on this quiz, the winner is P. Suguna Ma'am. Congrats, P. Suguna Ma'am. You are the winner you, of this quiz. A big round of applause. Wherever you are, you can give a big round of applause to ma'am. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. How did you? You can tell. How uh, How did you find the quiz? I uh, feel very happy and it was very interesting too. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the winner, so it will be interesting for you. For the others. Yeah, it was nice, ma'am. It was nice. So, um, it's, it will be always be wonderful uh, uh, to uh, have something like this. So, when, yes, interesting. Rubina, ma'am, you are one of the most active person. So, now I'm sharing uh, uh, the uh, feedback link now. I'm sharing the feedback link. You can just fill up your feedbacks and uh, you can, uh, if you have got any questions regarding the session, you can ask me and uh, we will be starting a new batch of uh, data science and machine learning courses the following week. If you are interested to have a full hands-on session and to learn about it, you can uh, let us know. Kindly fill uh, the feedback forms. Thank you, Doreen, ma'am. Ah, thank you. Thank welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. It's very interesting. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's very interesting to last this section. This section. I'm afraid of first. First, firstly, I am very afraid. I feel very interesting. Okay. <laughs> so, Mindy, 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the informative session, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Try to continue the more classes in the machine learning too. Okay, okay. If you are interested, you can contact me. I've given my my mobile number is nine double zero three zero two one three double five. And the I'm taking a screenshot of that. Ma yeah, yeah. My company's website I've given, and my mail ID and contact I've given. And any other questions? And uh, also your feedbacks kindly give into my YouTube channel, into my YouTube, uh, into this. Uh, I'll share the YouTube link with you now, okay? And I would wish uh, you to give your comments of uh, the feedbacks of the session in the comment of the video. How did you find the session interesting? Okay. So if you find the session interesting, uh, kindly give and uh, I'll share the YouTube link now. Uh, So you can uh, open the video and you can give your feedback in the comment session. Even those who are uh, viewing from the YouTube, uh, kindly give your feedbacks about the session on uh, the comments. You have given in the live, give it in the comments. Thank you, ma'am. OK. Dr. Darwin, uh, Nisha, fall in here. Yeah, tell me. Th thank you so much. The inputs are very useful. Thank you. And it was really an eye opener for everyone. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you all. Bye bye. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. Any other questions you have regarding the session on uh, image processing? You can ask me. No, ma'am. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. Uh, give your feedback on the YouTube link that I've shared in the comment space. In the comment space, kindly give your uh, feedback. And also you can see the other videos that I've given. So this is my YouTube channel. So you can see the series of uh, uh, lecturing. This is the live lecture that is going on now. On the YouTube link that I've shared in the comment space. In the comment space, kindly give your uh, feedback. And also, you can see the other videos that I. Okay. So thank you all for joining the session. Uh, you have, uh, I've shared the feedback link. You can fill in the feedback. And whatever is your uh, queries, you can call, you can contact. Contact details have been given here. So fill in your feedback form. Don't forget to give the feedback in the comment session. Thank you all. Bye-bye.